Welcome to Punch Keys Podcast. I'm Poppy Minix, your co-host, bringing you blunt talk for the fiction novelist. And I'm Cass Kay, your other writerly co-host. If you love to ramble about writing and need a tribe, you found us. Are you ready? We're uncorking now. Let's talk about punching those keys. Oh my goodness, it's Punch Keys time! Woohoo! I really like this topic. This is one of my love-hate topics. Well, first of all, welcome back from our break, Poppy. Oh, oh yeah, sorry, I just jumped right in, didn't I? Hey! <laughs> we missed you! So much! Yes. I missed you! Uh, we were on a vacation and break. So yes. it wasn't just like a, we were hanging out and not including you guys. We were on break from each other. I know, which is just dreadful. Super dreadful. Lame. So we're back. Yes. We had our romantic arc where we broke up, and now we're back <laughs> together. We had our dark times, but it's I okay. I missed you so much. We're back again. We're ah! back. Yes. The world tore us apart. <laughs> okay, we're back, and we're back with a really fun um episode that clearly poppy has already told us she's super pumped to talk about i am pumped i am Let's actually it. pumped what are it, we talking it is, about it is i i love and hate this topic so very very much it is whoo it's a it's a it's a big one it is actually a two-part we're going to be yes. doing a two-part two which i'm super excited about this is our first part which is first chapters yeah, oh. I know, right? You hear that just sad groan I face? mean, for me, it's a groan because it's just, there's so much pressure on it, and it's rewritten so many dang times. That is oh the love-hate part of it. That's the hate part. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! And so, we're doing first chapters tonight, and then next yes. week we will be doing last chapters. Yes. Um, As the second part to our two-parter, because they are... A unit together. So swear they are. In my mind they are, so they are. Okay, yeah, that works for me. (laughs) All right, first chapters. I actually have some uh, cool resources that I like for first chapters. So I kind of thought maybe I could give some of those to start off with. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Um, There is a a group called Right Hive, and they are on Discord. It's a writing group. If you haven't looked on Discord for writing groups, it's a great place. Um, Lots of groups do sprints and whatnot on there. And um, they had an online conference that Poppy actually told me about, and we both watched it. And there was a particular panel on there called Hook, Line, and Sinker, and they interviewed Jessica Brody and Scott Rankin. Mm-hmm. And a uh, special sneak peek, we may have scored an interview with Scott that will be coming out here in a couple I weeks. Oh, yes. What? Okay, so keep um, posted on that one. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. but it's so you can find it on YouTube, Right Hive, Hook, Line, and Sinker. They talk about what makes an engaging first chapter. Um, and they're both fantastic because Jessica is, oh my goodness, this is where I mess up. It is not Skin the Cat. <laughs> If you do it every time, and every ah. time I cackle, every time it is not skin the She's cat. It's not skinning it cats. Save the cat, which is oh. entirely different. It's got an S though, so I'm kind of um, there. Okay, <laughs> just got save the cat, which is about yes. um, romance beats, and I think it's right? about all beats. No, oh, it's is not it all just not romance. Just romance. Okay. You just happen to know a lot of romance writers, and we all use Save the Cat gotcha. a lot. We've all read it. Um, but yes, it is definitely a all-around plotting book and how to start your first. And it's great. So then on the other hand, um, then you have Scott, who is a young adult uh, sci-fi fantasy writer. So it was mm-hmm. two very different approaches to stuff. It was a great, great panel. I'd highly recommend it. And the other resource that I found a lot of great stuff from is a book called Wonder Book mm-hmm. by Jeff Vandermeer. Mm-hmm. I had to look over and make sure I was pronouncing that right. That's really good. That book is phenomenal. It's basically... Um, it's based for fantasy writers, but it's a how to write and create a fantasy story. And he uses really unique illustrations, like cartoons and drawings and stuff that are just Beautiful. clarify it in such a way. And it gives you visuals and it's just a fantastic book. The intro to it lists a page of characters. And when you see this cartoon character looking like this, you're going to get this type of information. And like, it's just, it's a really, really fun book. And he's got some great, great stuff about first chapters in there. Um, 
that I would highly recommend. Those are my two recommendations for first chapters. Do you have any recommends, Poppy dear? I mean, K.M. Wyland has, uh, as usual. I mean, she just is really incredible with her with her information. She has a checklist. She has a first chapter checklist, which is incredibly helpful. So, if you go to her K.M. Wyland on her blog, authors helping writers. Uh, it's something like that. I'll get the link and put it in the yeah. description for this episode. I'll put links to all of this stuff. Fantastic, yes. So, K.M. Wyland, she has a first chapter checklist that is incredibly helpful in getting your first chapter. And just thinking about it, because I just remember when I was first starting out in writing and trying to do these first chapters, I'm like, yeah, I got my first chapter. And then going back and editing it, and I was like, okay, this is great. And then having people read it and be like, I don't know what's happening. Like, I don't know where this person's going or, like, what's going on here and I'm like I just and then I went and found her and found this first chapter checklist and I was like oh I hadn't thought about what the mission is of the protagonist yet because I was just so excited about it and trying to make sure that everything is in your first chapter so that it's not just hanging out set the scene which is awesome but it's so many different things that need to go into your first chapter to pull the reader into the world to the mission to the motives, to everything. And there's so many things that you need to do in your first chapter to make sure that it hits the right tone and that people continue reading because that's the most important part. You want them to read past the first chapter. Well, let's go over all of those so many things. All right. Uh, First thing, obviously, is your first line. No pressure. (laughs) Yes. No pressure on that first line at all. I've only rewritten it like, oh, I don't know, a bunch, a bunch of times. I think the trick for me, I, I, I finally got a first line that I like, and I think it's a first paragraph that I like. So maybe I'm not, um, oops, sorry, that was the door on the side there. I, I wouldn't say I'm great at first lines because I have like a slow start into stuff, so I don't always have that captivating grabber, and you should. You should have a first line that really breaks the reader out of, I think, out of their norm and routines. That's what I'm striving to do lately with my first lines. So it's something that shocks. If it's a opening line that says, Today I skinned a cat, I don't think I'm going to be a very likable character. But that's a, you know, a first line that really makes someone stop and be like, Wait, what? That's not something I normally hear. So it makes me pause. And I'm trying to find stuff like that with my writing where it makes someone pause. Just that first line. It breaks them out of what they're thinking in in that moment. breaks them out of their house their parents, their kids, their siblings, their roommate, their whatever they have going on around them. It's like, oh, nope, pay attention to me. Right here, this story is starting. Yes. I'm trying. I'm working on it. I, it's your opening scene. It's like your everything is in that one tiny little line. Yeah, it's not scary at all, trying to figure no, out. No, no pressure. What about everything? Theme, character, setting. Oh, my gosh. It's how do you like go about picking a first line? Like, what do you do? Oh, well, that I pick a first line in about edit mm, sixty for my first chapter. <laughs> okay, I shouldn't have said that, but seriously, I mean, it, it's it's one of those things where I just I write the first line, right? I just I roll in, I write the first line. Ha ha, that's funny. That works for me. Great. Continue on. Keep going. I write the first chapter. I write the second chapter. I write the entire book. And then I go back and I'm looking at this line. I'm going, okay, what, once I write everything, what does this story mean? What is the tone? What am I trying to portray? What is the character's goal? What is happening? What is it that grabs you as a reader into something and just sucks you right in and goes, oh, I need to pay attention because this one line is big it means something it shows more than just oh that's funny it shows more than oh well the character's angry I need to have a scene I need to have a motive I need to have the entire book encompassed into one freaking sentence it's scary as a writer to do but it will hit if you edit if you look at your stuff if you're actually paying attention to what you're writing it will come to you and it will usually for me it hits my theme I mean it really does bounce right off my theme it's and and I don't I'm one of those writers where I don't necessarily know my theme right from the beginning I just start writing and then eventually I figure out what the heck is going on 
with my writing, it depends on the book. Sometimes I will plan out and all that good stuff, but I don't always have like what is happening with theme. I never think about that really when I'm first starting. I think about my characters and I think about my setting and I think about, oh, this relationship that's happening, but what does it mean to the person? That usually comes once I get to know the character a little bit more. So my first lines don't come for a while. I don't think I ever use theme in my first lines. Like I want to end my first chapter, but I mean, right now, the one that I feel like, okay, that's going to work for a start. It's literally one word for the first sentence. So I don't know if that's a great example, um, <laughs> but <laughs> it's an onomatopoeia word. Do I get bonus right? points for that? Um, but I think I look at something, like I said, that takes the reader out of the world they're in and into my world. But because yes. I write fantasy, I'm usually trying to introduce them to a new world. So I want something that, that first sentence, I want it to snap them some type of visual, some type of sense ev- evoking moment. So they're all of a sudden in a new world and it's got to be in the voice that you got to hit the voice of that protagonist. Like, yeah, in the first line, and everyone after you got to hit it really hard right away. Yeah, those are the things that I grab for, which the protagonist. It's that's a huge the protagonist. I mean, that really that's a huge part of the first chapter. That's kind of the point of your first chapter is introducing this protagonist, this person that you yeah. want the reader to care about and go on a journey with, right? Yes. So how do you do that? <laughs> Tell me all of the secrets so that I can go do it right, please. I don't know. Like, there's certain ones. I'm trying to figure out, like, what I've done in my first books or in the first lines in my books. I mean, I loved my my first book that published. I love the first line to that. I'm going to get it tattooed on me somewhere. I just I just freaking love it. Give us and the first line. It It sucks to be a siren. That's the first line of my book. And that and is like literally that it has the theme. so much character voice in it. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's my protagonist, and she's a siren, and you would think that it's all freaking fantastic, and it's totally not, and it, it sucks to be a siren, and she's going to tell you all about it. And so for me, that took a while to get to. Um, that was a later stage edit where I was like, oh my god, this is the first line! Like, it just smacked me upside the head, and I was like, no, this has to be it. And, it, and once I had it, I, I would move chapters as long as I kept that line like once I figured it out that was not moving so that there was no no convincing me not that anybody did but there was no convincing me otherwise that that was going to be a different line Uh, so I think like once I hit it I hit it I can't think of anything better to open that book than that line but man did that take some brain power and that took a long time and it took me figuring out through the entire process and going through the entire book a couple times to figure out that that was indeed the last line. I mean, the first line. <laughs> first line, last line. First line, last feels line. like the same after you've gone through so many edits. Super important. It does feel like the same thing. It's like, wait, where's that one? I don't even know. It's a big yeah. circle. Like, it's just like, who knows? Um, who yeah. Knows? So, but that, that's what happened with me. And I really enjoyed that. And it said so much on the theme and it said so much about the entire book. It was literally encompassed the entire book. You have to think about so many, it's so important. And it's scary to think how incredibly important that first line is. Yeah. But it is a constantly talked about thing. You talk about, but like, at you, least you don't have to get it right the first time. You don't. I mean, gosh, when you're you just throw stuff out until you figure out what the heck your characters are doing and what your book is about. And even if you plotted it, you still don't, some, I mean, maybe some people do. I never know when I plot of what sort of the... I pretty much know the tone because I know my author voice at this time. And I just can't get away from certain tones. But I just don't know my character quite yet. And like what their goals and their mission. And that might alter a little bit. And I don't know until I get to the entire thing what it's going to be. And that's okay. I mean, and I think even if some you are may. plotting things out... You're still, you're still, it's okay to edit that first line as many times as... Well, and it's funny because I had that first line, I had that line, but it wasn't in the place that I, I wasn't starting the book. And it should have been. I think that's a common thing too. A lot of times I've seen that so many times, people tend to start in the wrong spot. Right. So where you start in the story is huge for your first chapter. Yeah. And it's, uh, I've been doing, 
I just got done doing a round of querying um, for a manuscript. Mm -hmm. And I, so many agents in so many places talk about it's important that you start your book in the right place. Yes. So, my goodness, think about that. Think about if you can have a line that I think you can do theme, you can do setting, you can do whatever, but I think the biggest key I think that we would both agree on is character voice. Oh, I agree with you completely. Yeah, it's got to be something where the character voice just shines. Yes. Character voice, protagonist. The protagonist. I mean, it is about them, you know? (laughs) It really is. And so you're following this person and you want your reader to connect to that person and be invested. And having a first line that sucks them in and gives them thoughts on what this person is all about is just instantly adhering your reader to your work so that goes into the next topic too of having a likable protagonist and i hate that phrase yes, um right. so many places you're going to see that on checklists for a first chapter is having a likable protagonist i am gonna say stomp my foot and throw a tantrum and say they don't have to be likable they just have to be engaging <laughs> engaging is great it's I, true i need them to be engaging i need to have to I have to see what they do next or what happens next or how they react. I need that voice to be captivating. I don't have to like them. I don't have to like them for a while. I need to eventually like them. I can't go through a book that I dislike the main character. Well, what's dislike? Dislike is, um, that is really hard to define. Because so, so I think you're of right, two, engaging, you're right, you're right. I like think engaged. of two authors who do this really well. One, obviously, is like the king at it, Stephen King. Mm-hmm. Yes. He constantly has characters that I hate. Like, he has despicable characters that are just, but I want to see what happens. I want to see what's going to happen to them in the world. I want to see the people reacting to them. I want to see what what happens in the story. Um, the voice is unique, and it grabs me, and I'm going through it. You know, and I wonder, too, if part of that is a little bit of a genre difference. So, like, I can start a book and have it be a serial killer talking about killing someone. Right. And obviously that's not a likable character. Yeah. Um. But I want to see why they're doing it, who's right. doing it next, who's yeah. catching up on hints and clues. I want to be in that head that I don't understand. And I want to, it fascinates me and it's a unique character. It's an engaging okay. character. And so that's why I think they don't always have to be likable. I think uh, V.E. Schwab does it really good too with Vicious. Yes. She borders the line of likable characters, for sure. I mean, technically, they're villains, yeah. And the second one is not likable at all. But the first one is very likable, and he is not a good person. Um, And so I think that's, it's engaging. It's having a good handle on that character voice. Yeah. Where you can nail it in that first sentence, and you can keep it consistent throughout. It's like you walk into a room full of people. Mm-hmm. And there's everyone's talking, and there's just one person in the room by the way they're standing, their expressions. You catch a line of what they say, and you just your attention immediately goes to them, and you're like, "What are they talking about?" Right? Like, what is that? Who about? are you? Yes, that needs to be your protagonist. I could agree with you on that one. Yes. Yeah. So stick all of your characters in a room. We've talked about this before. There's the Great Gatsby writing exercise. I think we've yes. talked about that before. We have talked about that before. Yeah. So let's do that. Throw all of your characters into a ball. Even your who you think your protagonist is. Everyone. Yeah. And who is the character who is shining the brightest and is the most engaging and most interesting? That's your real protagonist. That's interesting, too. If you can't decide if you're like a multi-POV writer and you can't decide who your POV should really be I'm starting actually, with. I'm actually, for the first time ever, I'm... In the process right now, I've, I've got a. I'm doing a concept, and I think for the first time ever, I'm going to do multiple point of view for this story. Yee! I'm so scared of that. <laughs> I thought I knew who the main character was, but then when I started thinking about it and thinking about the other characters, they all had a different perspective in different parts of the story, and I'm like, oh my goodness, this has to be multiple point of view. Who's the lead? Who has the most point of views? I don't know yet, so I guess I'm just going to go throw them all in a ballroom and see. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I don't know. We'll see. Um, That's fantastic. But an engaging protagonist. And I think another thing besides character voice, which is obviously like their speech patterns, the type of words they use, their unique perspective, they'll walk into a scenario and usually see it in a 
different way than most people would. That's yeah. something that's really captivating. I think one of the biggest staples of creating an engaging protagonist is their motivation. Yes. Um, what's motivating them? Like, I don't know. What's the motto for their life? If they had a motto they live by, what would it be? Right. Yeah. And make that obvious on that first page. I agree with you on that. You need to see what they're all about. Any other tips and tricks you have for making your protagonist engaging? Or making them likable since you write romance? Well, and I think that is the thing. It's like, it it really does depend on genre. If you have a romance (laughs) or a YA, I feel like you need to have a likable character. I don't think you can get away with YA without, with having an unlikable character. At least at first, I mean, at first... Never say okay. never. Never say never. Like, prove me wrong. But, I mean, and you do end up with, you know, we talked about it before with hate to love situations and tropes and different things in romance or even with YA and you end up with the person who just doesn't like anybody. And, like, well, why? Like, give me more. Like, you might, this person might not be very likable to everybody else, but I really want to dive deep into their psyche and see why it is. And maybe I do like them and they just are hurt or there's other things going on in their life that totally make sense. I love in... that when the inner dialogue contradicts the outer perceptions yes. that's happening. Absolutely. I eat that up. I love it. I do too. Because we all know those people who just don't like people, right? And it, it just depends on why. Like, give me more and give me what is engaging about them along with that and make me invested into what this story is going to be about. I think that's it. It's like trying to get people to adhere and to stick and to be like okay I need to see what's going on I need to see like hmm like what what's what's all fishy about this whole situation here like what in, what kind of ride am I going to getting ready to go on to this let's pick up my you know walking stick for this journey and tag along but yeah for romance you typically want a likable character or you want somebody that (laughs) has potential to be liked so you might not have somebody at first you might have to be like oh man what a Oof, man, that, that's going to be a difficult one to sell. and it's kind of Or at like, least one person. Right. The, the point of view person is usually likable. Exactly. Even if the potential romance appears to be a butt face at first. I love characters that start out and you're like, what a butt? Like, really? Like, why do you have to act that way? And then all of a sudden there's just some part of them and you're like, oh, you're going to get hit with a romance that's going to smack you upside the head. I am here for this. Yes. It doesn't even have to be romance. No, it doesn't. There's so many TV shows where, and it's kind of breaking tropes, breaking stereotypes. Yes. You present a character and like, okay, this is the big, burly weightlifter dude who's a guy who doesn't like to talk about emotions because he's a guy and who's only obsessed about working out and he's like a dude's dude and I'm going to put all these stereotypes on him. Stereotype, right? And then I love, uh, TV shows do this a lot, where it's like three episodes in, all of a sudden you get like a roll out memory or another character that knows them that comes into the scene and all of a sudden everything you thought you knew about why they're acting the way they are you totally didn't you were completely off yes i love that so so that is such a tricky tricky line though because you also have to start your contract with your reader and you can't just flip on them I think as long as you're not flipping your protagonist, as long as you're flipping side characters and not the protagonist, I think you're absolutely fine. Okay, that makes sense. Because, yeah, you have to be careful with that because you can't sell a story from your first chapter and then be like, just kidding, three chapters later, it's not about that at all. It's about this instead. No, I was being coy. And it's like, no, you're being a butt and nobody wants to read your stuff now. I'm just kidding. Some people really may. But set up the expectations of your book in your first chapter. You can't just sell something to somebody and then completely change your tone and completely change your character and have them be not what they thought or kill them off. God, do not kill off your main character. Well, maybe I mean, maybe some people might. I mean, but you can. You can, but then what are you going to do? You know? I mean, if it's multi-point point of view and depending on your genre, you can totally kill off your main okay. characters. Poppy's just Unless, in romance talk okay, right now. Okay, time out though because there's some <laughs> kick-ass like sci-fi that does that. So I I am totally not talking about you sci-fi people where you're like, well, I'm going to kill them off and make them an AI. Fantasy does in it. it. All in it. Okay, cool. You kill off your main character. Fantasy does fantasy? it. Horror does and it. And doesn't bring them back? 
Yeah. What do you do with them then? What do you do with your I mean, protagonist space? What is it? Game of Thrones kills off everyone. That was not his. That was not the the POV though. That was not the main POV. It was Wasn't a main it, character. Like, multiple point of views. It's not a single point of view story. It is per chapter. I have to go check that out. It's been a really long time. So none of the chapters that have a point of view are ever killed. Not when you're in that point of view. I are don't you in know. the point of view? Oh my gosh, I have to go look that up now. It's been it's been literally like decades since I read it, and I don't remember now. Oh no! So yeah, There's, and if that's a thing though, like killing off, um, like no one being safe, that's kind of a trope that is in several different genres, and it's actually a thing. Well, and if you have multi POV, um, I can understand that. But if you're starting out in like the POV of like a whoever and then you murder them off and switch povs after you've been three chapters into one head it's like wait what anything where you die in the end it's still the journey okay you're saying you can't kill someone in the first chapter I'm saying you can't kill somebody in first second third fourth and then just change the book completely and have it be something completely not what was expected i completely disagree because killing someone could be an inciting incident and completely changing everything. I cannot imagine killing off a literal main POV character and then having it, be, unless it's AI or some kind of paranormal, now I'm a ghost or something like that. I But it, for me, I think it's more of the, okay, let's not talk about the killing off part. Let's talk about the completely changing the book in a way that doesn't make sense for the first chapter. But it would work for fantasy or horror if you had the same setting and you had the same stakes can i cannot do books where you set something up that is so prominent and do not allude to anything and then have it set up and be like just kidding killed him because i wanted to shock you well i am shocked and i'm also pissed so there but that's me i think I, yeah, I definitely think that's a that, that, that's a, a mean button reader. trigger for you. It is. Um, but I definitely think it's a device and tool. I think being brave and bold and being willing to kill off a character, even if it's a character that you introduce in your first chapter, it's a relationship you introduce in your first chapter. It makes the death matter. I'm on the boat where I, I don't like it when people have deaths that don't matter. Okay, I could see that. So it has, it does have to matter. I agree with you. Um, so I think you're right. I do believe it de- depends on your reader and knowing your demographics. If your demographics will get away with that. Yeah, if your genre, your genre is expectations okay are huge yes. in this conversation. Which is also huge when you're looking at your first chapter and what you need in there. Um, understanding your genre and as you go into your first chapter, what the reader is going to be looking for. Your first chapter is this, okay. Here's all the things that you're looking for because of this genre. Yeah. It's here, here, and here. But I'm um, tweaking this. It works. And I think you mentioned yes. tone. And your tone has to be exactly in your first chapter what the rest yes. of the book delivers. And I found uh, recently in the query process, which has been oh so not uplifting. <laughs> query um, is hard. But I have found an interesting way of looking at it. So when you go and you pitch your book and write up a query – you know, we had talked about doing log lines and tag lines and synopsis. When you actually get to your query and you're pitching this, or if you're writing the back of the blurb for a self-published book, or if you're pitching it to an agent, whatever tone it's in is the story that you're delivering, it has to match the first chapter. So like if they go from their query, your query, and then they go to read your first chapter and they're completely different tones and you're like, oh, but it ends up being that way halfway through the book, right. it's not going to work. And it's the same thing for when a reader picks it up. You can't be like, oh, but hold on because your genre expectations or the things you want is coming. You just have to hold on or the tone and what happens changes. You need to have a tone and a character voice that they like right away. You can't expect them to hold out and wait to get to the part where they're yeah. going to start liking it. So that's something I've had to work on. I've had to do some readjustments to my first chapters because I'm like, just hold on. I just have to set things up and then you're going to be okay. No, they're no, not going to wait for me to set things up. And that is a, I mean, that is so many, I've heard so many people say that. And with critiques and everything else that I've received, I've had people be like, you really need to set, and it just really does depend on the genre of person. 
So I have people tell me that I really need to set my scene and I need to like make sure that they know they wanted like a prologue. And I'm like, dude, I am like anti-prologue. So that is never, ever going to happen for me. But not, I am a throw in the action, dump in the fire. Here you get three seconds of who this person is. Just kidding. Because like this first chapter is going to tell you everything that just went horribly wrong for them. Or this is just... This is the the hook that's just gonna like drag them into a journey they did not expect. But I want that like right then and there. I am, and maybe it's just me being impatient. But I'm I'm not the reader that's gonna want you to set up, you know, everything. And a lot of people do a lot of like fantasy and um and high fantasy and everything wants to set up the entire scene with, you know all the names and all the people and everything in the world that so that you're ready and you know what's going on. I can, um, like Shogun. Shogun was like the first 200 pages was world building. Nothing happened except for world building. And for me, I was, it's That's intense. intense and it was me. just like, but, but once you get it, it's like freaking amazing. But geez, just, you just have to wait. You gotta be patient. I don't have that attention span right now. I'm reading feed right now. Uh, it's a zombie book by Mara Grant. The character voice is awesome, and I'm holding on because the character voice, but the world building and how long things are going, I'm like, you know, at page 66, and I'm like, is something going to yeah. happen? Because I get your character voice, and now it's just world building upon world building upon world building, and I'm like, I need yeah. something to happen. I do think you need a setting yeah. grounder I agree for your first now. chapter. Uh, I think that's super essential. Even if you're jumping into the fire or the mix, you need to introduce the world. Even if it's not a fantasy, you're like, Cass, I don't write fantasy. I'm contemporary. I need to know it's contemporary. I need to know where yeah. it's at. I need to know where, what the expectations are for their day-to-day -day life. I need an introduction to the protagonist's day-to-day -day life so I can kind of sink in and get my bearings. I agree. And even, I mean, especially... You hear about starting dialogue, whether or not to start your book with dialogue. Well, if it calls for it, then sure, start with dialogue. But make sure that you do set a scene pretty quickly so that people understand it's not just two bubbles of conversation and you don't have any scene or any indicators of what this these people look like or who they are or anything around them. It's just people talking. Just make sure that there's something there to ground what's happening. Because that setting really is very important to set your scene because you're trying, to, people are trying, when you first start reading, you think about how you read and you're reading your first chapter, you want to kind of get a, even if they don't give any indicators of like what people look like or anything like that, you still have little quirky things, the way that they speak or where they're from and what the scenery looks like. You're trying to visually, cinematically put together what something looks like, like you're watching a show because that's how we read. We read because... You know, you're trying to figure out whether through emotions or whether through anything of like how something is pinned together and how it's put together and what the world is like. And if you don't have that, you just don't get the full, I don't know, experience of it and trying to see. I agree. I think it has to be there. Um, I just need to be grounded and know what's going on. You were talking earlier about um, jumping right in with the hook and getting that in. And I kind of, I wanted to talk about that because that's something that I've had to research a lot to understand the difference because I've messed up a lot and thought that my hook was my inciting incident and it wasn't. I used to, I've gotten better and I understand it more. I've, I've used to start my books off with my inciting incident and it would be, this is the moment that changes everything. This is the moment where everything's flipped up and sit down and nothing's the same anymore. But I never established what the day-to-day -day was before that big explosion. So the impact of the explosion yeah. just isn't there. It's more jolting and confusing. And it's like all of this is being thrown at the reader and they're like, I don't even know why it's important. And it's hard to keep reading at that point. All of so all of my research, this is what I have found. I actually wanted to make sure I wasn't like completely crazy in my head. And so I went and looked it up and KM Wayland says it's like twelve percent into your book is when your inciting incident is. I think like right around end of chapter two, mm -hmm. beginning of three is kind of like an ideal spot for an inciting incident. But your hook comes in chapter one. So your hook comes in something 
unique that happens to the story and the character. So I am going to do something we never do. So I'm going to tell you guys a little secret. Poppy and I have podcasting rules. I did not tell her I was giving this Oh, up, I'm so. like bug-eyed right now. I'm like, oh, what are we doing, Cass? <laughs> uh, so we have um, podcasting rules. And one of our podcasting rules is we try not to talk about our own works too much. Sure. Especially something that hasn't been published. Because as we're, we'll know what the other's talking about. I know all of Poppy's works. I've read them all. I know her characters. We brainstormed together. So I can talk to her about it. But you guys aren't going to know what the heck we're talking about. Right. I'm breaking that rule. Because... <laughs> Hear me out. Poppy has a wonderful book coming out, Contemporary Romance, that she uh, got picked up. It's a uh, holiday hotel, so look for it. We're going to have a whole podcast on it. We're super pumped. But I think it's a beautiful example for a hook and inciting incident. So it's a contemporary romance, and the beginning of the book, the first chapter, a couple breaks mm-hmm. up. A couple breaks up. The girl is, like, over this. It's Christmas time. She decides to go and have a island vacation by herself. Screw this dude. So she goes there. She gets to the island. She meets, obviously, hunk face romance (laughs) partner. And um, you think that's the inciting incident. It is not. So the hook is the breakup and her going to the island. They meet. This guy's alluring. Super cool. The inciting incident comes when there's a conflict and why they can't get together. There's a, that's your inciting incident. And I think it's a perfect example of... Something engaging that happens and super excited and you're, you're on the girl's side. There's a bad breakup. You want to go with her. You want to cheer on. Girl power. Roar. And hot guy. But the inciting incident is the conflict that stops whatever goal your protagonist wants from happening. It is. And so you have to have those layers. And I... As a fantasy writer, tend to have like, you know, the whole like whole Alice in Wonderland experience where she drops down the hole. Yes. And I always start it off with her dropping down the hole. That's not where Alice in Wonderland starts. Right. That's the hook. That's well the hook? That's the hook. I think that's the inciting incident because it changes. She falls down the chasing the the rabbit is the hook. She's doing her thing and there's a rabbit that does not fit in the world and has the watch and he's wearing a coat and he looks totally different and she chases the rabbit. Oh, okay, cool. Super engaging and different, right? I like that. Yes, absolutely. And so um, I think it's important to sit back and look at what your inciting incident is and what your hook is and make sure you don't have both in the first chapter. That would yeah. be my advice for a first chapter. Because like it's that. something I've had to work the on The first chapter is just almost like a work in progress until it publishes. That's all there is to it. Like, it's just a constant state of... Did I do that right? Wait, I need to go repair this now. Wait, I need to go push this into place. Ah, I ended it like this, so I need to go back and make sure that I'm hinting at this from the very beginning. And it's all just, it's just a constant tweaking on your first chapter, your first three, just making sure that you, that you're delivering what you've, what the rest of the book is about. Yep. Given a slice of the cake. Yes. And it has to be like, I think I'm, I'm going to go with it. I have a metaphor. I have oh! This awesome metaphor. That's awesome. Okay. So, it's a cake. Yes. Right? Your first chapter is a cake. Your, no, your whole book is a cake. It's yes. It's a big cake. And so, the flavoring of it and the color is whatever. You see a pink cake, you're like, oh, I bet you it's going to be strawberry. I am a strawberry eater. I want strawberry cake. Yeah. But if it's chocolate, you're like, oh, it's chocolate cake. I like chocolate. I want a chocolate cake. So if you go and slice into it and it tastes like lemons instead of chocolate, you're not going to be thrilled. Lemon cake eaters will probably love it. Chocolate cake eaters will not. And so it's whatever you're packaging this story as in your query, in your taglines, in your first chapter. Yeah. It needs to be geared so that the people who like that kind of cake know it's that kind of cake exactly because how are your lemon eater people gonna know that it's a lemon cake when it looks like chocolate they're not even gonna and find it they're not gonna no, look at it not. because the chapter is they're gonna look at it and be like this isn't a lemon cake and then you're gonna get pissed off chocolate eaters that is true they're gonna be they're gonna be super mad i i'm i am one of them i'm gonna be really mad at you if i go to eat chocolate cake and it's lemon we are not gonna be friends anymore i'll be thrilled but i would probably start with the lemon so i'm gonna be really confused as to why this chocolate cake tastes like lemon i like lemon but when i want chocolate i want chocolate Uh, that makes sense i understand yeah just leaving it having people need to move to the next chapter is so fun 
having it be almost like a mini cliffhanger is always exciting for me just trying to toy with those ideas on how to end a first chapter and have it be like you have to turn the page oh you have to turn the page I think I would like to do a whole podcast on chapter endings in general yeah because they are an art form that I just do not have nailed down that's something I'm definitely working on I would love to talk about that more but your first chapter even more so than any of the others has to have they have to go to the next page Your first chapter ending is probably the most important of all your chapters, besides your last. Yes. But there was know. one other factor that I wanted to talk about, and that is um, the relationships introduced in the first chapter. Mm-hmm. Um, not just romantic. I know all of you romance writers, romance too. But also um, friendships, maybe antagonistic family relationships. Whatever relationships you introduce in that first chapter – your reader's going to be looking for that relationship to yes. come up again and to be relevant throughout the rest of the story. They really so are. Yes. Be really careful what you introduce in that first chapter. Not just character-wise, obviously characters as well, but relationships, motivations, beliefs. I wouldn't put a throwaway character into a first chapter, I don't think. I mean, maybe just as like walk by, oh, what's the word? Oh my gosh, in movies where you have the people walking by. My mind's extras. Too, but you I might know. have some extras, but you don't name those extras. You're not like, oh, this person who I fully named and who they're all up in this chapter and they have like words and stuff like that. You're gonna want <laughs> they those, have like they have words, words right? Ooh, You're baby. gonna want them through the rest of your book because people are gonna be looking for them if they are named. They are going to adhere to those names. So be careful with all the names that you have in your first chapter and not using too many. Some people, you know, it depends on your genre, I suppose. But for me, I I can't, I cannot obtain more than like five, maybe six at the most, maybe seven names. It's just too many. Like if it's just this person and this person and this person, people did this thing and all of them. I'm like, oh my God, there's so many people. And I start panicking because I'm like, who am I supposed to be looking at here? Who am I supposed to be looking at? I don't know. It's everybody. And so like, I, I just can't. <laughs> that's just me though. I, I get overwhelmed. So, And I think too, that's like a genre thing because it I'll is. go in and be like, okay, I'm just going to hold on to whatever the point of view person is focusing on. I don't try and hold on in memory to any of the excess names. I'm just getting a feel for it, and I'm just holding on to that main character. As a reader, that's all I hold on to for first chapters. Yeah, I just, uh, if it's too many, I, I, I freak out. If you're naming them, have them have a role. They are now a cast member. There they are. I love it. You are impassioned about some of this tonight. It's super cool. I am such a big first chapter person because I am such a snobby reader that if you don't catch me on the first chapter. You're a snobby chapter, reader? I can be. I re- I will abandon a book. If, if you don't pull me in by the first chapter, I'm like, yeah, you know. But <laughs> it takes, or I'll probably go check stuff, especially if it's something that I really need to read or someone's recommended or I see that somebody has read it and they loved it for a certain point. Um, if I can't get into the first chapter, if, if whatever, the voice isn't holding me, if the characters are not holding me, if nothing happens, I'm like, oh, I just don't know if I can do this. And maybe it's just not the time for me to do it, especially, I think it depends on my state of mind as well. If I'm super busy in life, I don't have time to wait around to build a world. And so I just want, just give it to me. Um, but then if maybe it's a little bit slower, I'm at the beach and I have a whole week to read a book gosh okay sure let's build a world let's chill let's talk about it let's hang out but I think it just depends on my time on like what's going on in my life I read I read tons of uh fantasy I tend to do a lot of like urban and contemporary stuff but um my rule of thumb is first hundred pages okay if you can't get me in the first hundred pages and I'm struggling to keep want like I'm not wanting to pick up the book and I'm past 100 pages then I'll I'll let it go Mine's probably about half that or maybe a little bit less. I really like a, and I mean, I will stick with it, especially if there's something, something has to grab me. Voice, attention to the character, the world. There's something that I need to be pulled into and I will tolerate a lot as long as there's something that grabs me. But if it seems like there's not a mission or that I don't really like the, the main character and there's not a mission and there's no scene setting, and there's grammatical errors. That's a big one for me. And I never even, I very rarely notice grammatical errors. Ooh, they but I'm like a me. really bad line editing person. Like my brain doesn't even 
register half of it. And just which is sticks right makes to it. editing and writing super fun. <laughs> I'm a writer, I promise. <laughs> Isn't it so oh. funny? Like our strengths and weaknesses, because there's certain things I'm like, I don't have a word right now. It's just gone. There's no words. Just deal with a thing. So yes. So basically, your first chapter needs everything. It has to be spot on, and it's terribly intimidating. So, yeah. Yeah. You're ready. (laughs) You're ready to go out in the world and write it. Do it. Yeah. Good luck. No, it's so great, though, because I think the love part of it is nailing it. The love part of it is editing it and remembering why you wrote this book. Because it really is. You wrote the book because your first chapter. You started your book in a certain place because you fell in love with something in your book and this is where the journey begins. And that's the most fun part for me is going back to that first chapter and tweaking it again just because I can't stop reading it because that's what drew me into this. This is what made me write it. I needed to introduce this character. They needed to have this event happen. Something happened that made me write this book and this is where it began and that is the love part of it and that's when you just oh man I just love first chapters for that reason but they are a pain but I love the crap out of them I think I have that relationship with all of writing the oh my god it's hard oh my god I can't stop I love it I don't care if I'm bummed on some days I don't care if it's not working on some days and it's just a struggle I can't seem to stop I just the stories don't stop and no. that feeling, that high when you do get it right and you love it. Yes. Yeah. I love I it when I when I go back and just try to edit something and then I just read. I just keep reading and I'm like, oops, I just read five chapters of something I've read 14 times before because, you know, editing. So I just, those are great. Like write what you love to read, but that's where your story begins. And that is really, really fun when you get it right. And when you edit it and when you realize what your entire story is about and then going back to that first chapter and being like, oh, I know what I'm doing now. I know what's happening. She isn't quite like this. She's like this instead. Or I need to build more of my world. Now I know what the world looks like. Let's add it into the first chapter again. Those are super fun moments because you're, it's, it's clear progress. Leveling up. It is leveling up. It's like every time game. you go through it, you just are like, oh, okay, I know what to do now. Or, oh, I need to add these things. Or whatever reason. I have a different way that they speak now. I have a, a style for this person. And that is just so much freaking fun because it is so great to see those changes. All right. Well, write your first chapter. Edit it. Edit it again and again and again. And remember, you love it. <laughs> <laughs> write your whole book and go back and write it and edit it again it's gonna be yes awesome. do not keep write, editing your first chapter until you've written the book yes don't do that no don't think you're gonna nail your first chapter on your first run through and you just need to get it right before you move on don't no. don't you don't even know what the right thing is until you're done with your book and we have a challenge <gasps> yay we have a challenge the challenge is i would love to hear first lines of the current work in progress you have going on i love first lines give them give them to me give us all the first lines they're so much fun gosh i love first lines all right keep punching the keys don't give up on yourself you got this Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And if you liked this episode, please subscribe and give us that clickable five-star love. Got writer questions or feedback? Reach out through our website. And until next time, make sure to punch the keys.